Hi everyone, I want us to reason about this together. Have you ever thought about it? Like, no matter how ugly a girl is, once a guy falls in love with the girl, the look, the girl's look doesn't matter to the guy anymore. No matter how ugly a guy is, once the girl falls in love with the guy, the guy look does not matter to the guy, to the girl anymore. Have you ever thought about it? Yes. This is the perfect scenario to explain the love God has for us. No matter how ugly our sin make us look, God still chose us. He still gives us a chance, a privilege to come to be His own because He's our Father and that love is there. So our sin portrays us very, very ugly. So He takes it as imperfection for us. It doesn't matter to Him. So this is love pure love real love so have you ever think about it how are you reciprocating this love to god do you think you are making him happy or do you think you are making him sad okay let's use this two biblical scenario to explain this thing further so that we can understand how much god loves us now first god first creation is actually adam he created Adam first. But Adam did what? Due to disobedience, Adam failed. And then that failure, because of disobedience, make fit Adam not become our father anymore. So now Adam is not our father anymore. Because Adam is a failure. So once you are indulging in all those sins, you are also a failure. That's what sins make you be. You become a failure like Adam. So, once you are a sinner, you remain in your sin, you become sons of Adam. Final. Now, when we now have another person that is righteous, that is obedience to the laws, to the rules, that is abiding to the rule and regulation of God, that have faith. Now, in I inherit the fatherhood of our generation, which is Abraham. Through obedience and staying holy and believing in God, Adam become our father. Now, when we want to say we are sons of what? We say we are sons of Abraham. We never said we are sons of Adam anymore. So now, as a Christian, we are sons of Abraham. What makes us sons of Abraham? Because Abraham is a believer. And true, because Abraham is a believer, Abraham become a friend of God. You know, God was trying to be, be friend with Adam. God will go to visit Adam in the evening and talk with him. But once Adam failed, God, everything about Adam is forgotten forever. Go to the Bible. After the Genesis, there is nothing about Adam anymore. Once he failed like it, it is gone. But through love, through obedience that Adam, Abraham have for God, he became a friend of God. Even in, when he's dead in heaven, when Jesus was telling us about the story of Lazarus and, and, the, and the rich man, he even let us know that Abraham is in the paradise already. Even before Jesus gets to paradise, Abraham is already living in paradise, in heaven. Based on what? Based on obedience. So now, how do we reciprocate God's love? It is only through obedience. Very simple. If you love me, keep my commandment. If you love me, keep my commandment. So, I love God. I love Jesus. I see all your wonders. Are you keeping God's commandment? That's the only and the best way for you to reciprocate his love. If you are still indulging yourself in the sin, you are robbing yourself of your blessings. That's just the main fact. And that makes you sons of Adam. Once you are indulging yourself in those sins, you are what? Sons of Adam. But once you believe and you are living righteously and you are a law-abiding Christian, that makes you sons of Abraham. It is so, it's so simple. So, if you are still smoking, fornicating, drinking you are robbing your own self of your glory that's that's the fact because if you are indulging in those things and then you think okay i'm rich or your riches are like chaff that the wind blow away just like that or you keep making money out of iniquity if you are a guy like you may, can be making money hurting people or if you are a woman you can be making money prostituting you cannot make money out of god's will for your life once you are indulging yourself in the sin. So, you'll be making money off the sin. Because Satan is your father. He has sons of failure. 
So whatever you are doing cannot prosper. It's not possible. Because what? You are sons of Adam. You are not living according to God's will. You are not abiding to the law of this God. You are not following his rules and regulations. So once you are doing all those things, it, is, it will be very hard for you to prosper in a good way. Yes, that's the fact. But as a Christian or as a believer, as a human being, if you are living according to God's will and you are not indulging yourself in every sin, you will be like a tree planted by the stream of water which yield its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever it does, prosper. So you don't need to indulge yourself in bad activities for you to make money. Very simple. Love me. Keep my commandments. So once you are keeping this commandment, whatever you yourself you are doing, it will prosper. But if, if you are not living according to the commandment and you think eh, any sin, eh, it's just no more sin, you are thinking sin, you, can, you cannot even stop all those sins. Forget about it. Your riches are like chaff that the wind will come and just blow away, boom, and then it's gone forever. So you will keep up rising and falling, rising and falling. But once you are a believer, or you are any woman or whatever you choose to do, just keep commanding of God. And then you are building yourself on the solid foundation, on the foundation, on the rock. Imagine Jesus explained to us, when you build your house on the rock, when the winds come, it can never blow it away. But when you build your house on the, on, on the sand, when the wind come, it will fall. So that is just it. So try and try to reciprocate this love to God by repenting. By offering yourself a living sacrifice, holy, holy and presentable unto God. This is all what it takes to you. This is all what it takes. This is all what it takes. If you are thinking, okay, they are shouting kingdom of God, kingdom of God, Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming. And you have said this all this time. My brothers and sisters, Jesus will come. It's not until when Jesus comes that Jesus comes up. The moment you die, your Jesus has come. There is no coming back. Just know that. After death, it is judgment. So, when they are telling you Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming, keep it in mind that in this life, I have only one second to live. The Bible says it's one minute that is, that is between evil and good. It's only the good people that God are keeping that is saving from all evil. That's what the scripture says. So, we only have one minute. One minute. One minute. All of us in this life, we have one minute. So, we can die anytime. So, it's not what Jesus come. That you need to repent. Or that you will go to heaven. Jesus can come. Your own Jesus can come at any time. So once your Jesus comes, you are dead. So this is why this calling is coming again. For you to repent. Think about your ways. Reciprocate this love. Show this man that loves you. That even gave his only begotten soul. So that you will not perish but have everlasting life. Eh? The soul that God gives to you. Now smoke you. They smoke inside down. You are smoking inside down. You are prostituting that your body, that your body, that your body. You are meeting with any woman, every man up and down. It is the right time for you to repent all those secret things. Repent. Repent. Think about it. Which one do you love most? This life that we only have short moments. That after two generations, nobody will remember you again. Or that place that you are going forever. That is eternal. Choose one. Enjoyment here. Forever, the here that is not forever, that will not even last. That you cannot even, that you don't even, that two days is not guaranteed in your life. That one hour is not guaranteed in your life. Yeah. But when you get to heaven, that place is forever. There is no coming back. So now think about it and choose one. This is my calling for you this morning. Reciprocate this love for God. Let the death of Jesus worth it. Let this, his son that he sacrificed, let it worth it over your life. He sacrificed his son for you. So for you not to perish, but have everlasting life. So that you can have this everlasting life. That's why he sacrificed his son. Now, reciprocate this love for him. He loved you first. Now, show him that you love him too. By living holy. Sacrifice yourself for him. Simple. God bless us. In the name of Jesus.